<laughs> there was a whistle over. But uh, you were, you were just before we could press record there. You were uh -huh. telling me a little bit about the the comedy scene in Munich. Yeah, it's really good. It's thriving. Um, I had a Berlin comic just yesterday saying like he reckons Berlin's number one and then Munich's number two. I think maybe because there's a lot of expats here, but there's a lot of people that want to try comedy. Uh, and I think what makes it better is there are a lot of vehicles for people to do that. So there are lots of opportunities to get stage time. So you get more people who have the chance to do more comedy. So naturally just the more you do something, the better you get at it. So there's a pool of comics here that are really good, like really funny. And um, so there's two English, currently there's, there's three English shows a week and I do two of them. I manage two of them. And there are a lot of German shows daily. Sometimes there are two or three daily, but they often say, all right, we can have one or two English comedians performing. English speaking comedians, not English nationality. Yeah. And the main thing is you get a lot of, I think I'm the only English person doing it, but there's uh, generally the English speaking ones, a lot are from India or Pakistan and various nationalities, but they speak English brilliantly. Like there's a guy from Georgia, there's an Italian, but their English is really good, much better than the German. And there's some Germans that only want to do comedy in English. They feel like the, the language of comedy is English, not German. So, um, so you get loads of comics. There's a big pool. Every show I do, um, there's a limited number of spots, obviously, because it can't go on for four hours. So every time there's, there's more people wanting to perform than, than available spots. So that's a, yeah, good sign. So the, yeah. it's thriving here. And so I've started to do like bigger shows, like ticketed shows. Um, and the whole thing's growing. Yeah. It's, it's healthy and, and it, it's really fun. And generally the people who do it are really nice people. There's no egos, you know, everyone's really happy doing it and supportive and yeah, I, I, I can't speak highly enough of it. It's great. Are you in that place where people can make a living from it yet? Or are you in no. that kind of halfway house between? No, there's nobody in Munich is making a living from it. I think there are some in Berlin. Um, I'm in a place where you can start to do a few shows that are like ticketed paid. And I've done a few of those, but um, you couldn't make a living off it. No. And I'm not sure as an English speaking comedian, you ever could hear. Because obviously, we're, I mean, bottom line is we're in Germany, right? So in German, I think you could definitely, but in English, nah. But at best, it'd be like a sideline, a nice part-time job. Uh, recently, I spoke to a Chicago native stand-up comic or mm. stand-up improv uh, performer as well. And he's based in Amsterdam and they have, it's called... Boom Chicago, I think it's called. I probably got that wrong. I should remember. And uh, yeah, he's performing there five nights a week with nice. a cast of six or seven other performers. Okay, and stuff. cool. So, yeah, it's interesting where these things are popping up. There is people who do make, I know people who do professionally, but they generally, they'll have a base wherever that might be. So I know someone in Barcelona who's an American. And they'll just be invited to do gigs or they'll pop off and maybe do three in an area, then come back or maybe spend a week doing that. And those guys do make a living out of it. But I think generally, even then, they probably got a sideline, you know, to try and make extra money. But that's probably the same in the UK or the States. How many people actually would make a living out of it? I don't know, actually. That's not an easy game, right? You know, it's... No, no. But, but you're comfortable where you are. I mean, not financially comfortable, but comfortable mm. in the way things are running. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's given yeah. your artists a kind of a, a stage, literally. Yeah. I think for me, it's like quite important to uh, create kind of a community feeling where it's supportive because it's hard to go on stage on your own and not feel that everyone's with you. Uh, cause often for all the comic comedians, sometimes you try new material and it's bombs. It's awful. <laughs> Whereas if other people are really supportive, um, it makes it easier to go on stage and, and there's a feeling certainly with the, the shows that I do, there's a nice sense. I don't know about that. There's a nice sense of community and, you know, we help each other out and it's the good guys. Do you think it's like the advent of social media or the increase in social media that's given people the 
confidence or self-confidence to go and try something like this. Maybe 10, 15 years ago, it wasn't such a... People would do it, right? But you, yeah. the stakes were higher in that case, maybe. I wonder if if it's actually the opposite. I wonder a lot of people kind of stay in and social media has made people quite closed in, uh, do a lot of solitary things. Whereas the comedy stuff is about getting out, performing in front of people, mixing with actual people. People, you, I know uh, people use social media to, uh, media to advertise themselves or a show, but I think the actual performing is more for that human element. I've got no evidence to prove that. Um, no, I don't just, know. Just but it's, it's what I think, yeah. I oh. mean, I think maybe people use social media, so, social media is a way to see there's opportunities. As in like, oh, I saw on Instagram, or I saw on Facebook, there's this show. So I might go and give it a try. But I'm not sure it's the reason behind it. And I'm not, I think it's only a way that people have learned there's an opportunity rather than influencing them to want to do it. Mm. Yeah. I think. It's a fair point. He's brilliant. Or, God, this has only got 200. What's the problem? Oh. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't really understand. Um, I'm learning. Well, now you're getting I mean, into the realm of people's attention spans or algorithms or all this other kind oh of God, inexplicable yeah, yeah. stuff that, untangible stuff that you can't really, you don't know where it starts and where it no. ends. I've got no but idea. you feel like you have to do it because if you don't, then you're, you're missing someone's well, missing yeah. trick. You know? And you never know, like someone might see something, a video and think, oh, this guy's good. And then maybe offer me a job or, or another kind of opportunity. So, and also it is kind of fun. You know, to pop a video on there. And, yeah. How are your social media skills then? How is your crap? Uh, I mean, to so. <laughs> crap. I, I need to be better at it. Um, or my, my, it's like I try. I mean, that's not certainly true. But when you see other people, you think, "Oh, that's quite." I, I know. Could, uh, how do you do but, that? Right? But they must <laughs> be know? spending a lot of time on it. I, and I wonder if sometimes there's like a certain. If you were born into it, then you kind of did what it's called, a digital native. Whereas if you're not a digital native, then it generally, it's like, it's not inbuilt. It's like, okay, this doesn't come naturally to me. So I'm gonna have to look at it and figure it out. Cause I know often like, I, I wanna be good at it, but I don't know where to start. So I'm just like, boo, here's a picture, post a picture. Or I think this is funny or, or this, that, and the other. So I'm no expert. Learning man, learning. But I think if you have a, a bit of time in your hands, a wee bit of patience, yeah. some YouTube tutorials and stuff like that. The other day we yeah. were talking about uh, Da Vinci and stuff yeah. like that, right? Great tools where you can just take your time to go through it and put yeah. something oh, together yourself. God, the tools are there. Absolutely. And I've, cause I've done video editing for something else in the past. So I'm, I'm comfortable with all that and cameras and things like this, but it's more, uh, I think I think too much about it. It seems from what I gather, the best way is just to keep posting, keep posting, keep posting, keep posting. And then eventually you get some traction. From what I gather, that's the best way. But what the fuck do I know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the proof's in the pudding, I was going to say. I know, too. yeah, I can't, really I, can't really, I, can, I can't confirm nor deny. What brought you to Munich, man? Uh, same story as loads of other people here. So my, um, my sadly now ex-girlfriend, she got a really good job here and my job wasn't so great back in my hometown. So she just said, Oh, I've got this good job. Do you want to come along? And I said, yeah. Um, had, I didn't have been any... together a while at that point. Yeah, a while, but we'd never lived together. Um, and the living together proved to be a bit of a disaster. Like sadly, you know, it all, yeah, it, you know, but nobody really did anything wrong. It was just one of those things. So we split up and then I didn't know what to do. Should I stay here in Munich or leave? At first I found it very difficult to fit in because I found that basically the German directness, shall we say, really pissed me off. Whereas now I know it's just the way they are. It's not rude. But then I felt it was really rude and I thought, what can I, but I decided to stay and it was a good decision because where I'm from, just Preston is my hometown. They're just, you know, you got people with master's degrees working in call centers. There are just no opportunities. Whereas here I found there's just a lot more opportunities. So I've been able to do different things and, and that's what kept me here. I think. Yeah. So that's the reason I'm here. And there's a lot of other people here with the same story. A lot of people came here for a job, but a lot of people also expats came here for love. And yeah, I'm one of those guys.
And now you're just here for the football and the beer and random podcasts. With, random podcasts with for more Yeah, no, yeah, I fucking, yeah, I, you know, <laughs> I've carved out like a half decent life for myself here, yeah. That's what but, it's all about. And I yeah, think, yeah, you know, yeah. That's, and I'm that's happy, exactly like, in a nutshell, you know. And also, like, leave, I'd recommend it to anyone, even if you go back to live in the UK. I'd recommend leaving for a while, trying something new. Just, uh, get a different attitude, a different way of thinking. I, I, I couldn't recommend it enough. If I had kids, I'd be like, go live in another country. You might stay there forever. You might not come back, but go, 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 go. And um, so it was really, really, really a good decision in the end. Could have gone one way or another. Because I know people here, they've come here and they've just hated it and gone back in three months. They're just miserable, eh? Yeah, I just don't like it for whatever. And fair enough. You know, it's not a criticism. Just, no. Just they tried it and went back. Fair, fair play. Um, before we started recording, you were mm. also telling me about you were doing some theatre things or you have in the past yeah. or you, you still... Not at the moment, that? no, but I used to do a lot of like, theatre plays. So I joined this like sort of theatre group here in Munich and I did lots of uh, lots of plays. I did, I did some acting training back in England. Uh, so maybe in. that's a good a good segue in there. Did, did you have a background in any of this? Yeah, not, not like in the UK. Like I wanted to. Um and I did like you, you a, went an extra on Corey or anything. No, like, no, no. <laughs> well, that would have been great. Uh, no, I did like a like an acting course, but I did it just before I came to Munich, so I didn't really have the opportunity to to apply it in England. And then I came to Munich, and then suddenly I got the opportunity to like, oh, I can use some of my skills, and I got really good roles. And the roles led to me doing play did a couple of plays in Luxembourg, a couple in Belgium. Um. Was there one I saw advertised that was a radio play or a series of radio plays? I did a radio play and, uh, and um, I was the host and acted in it uh, in this place called America House in Munich. And it was uh, like Halloween themed. And, uh, yeah, that was really seen, cool. Yeah. yeah, I really enjoyed that. That was a really good experience. I'd never done that before. And I really, really enjoyed it. A lot of it is you don't have to learn lines. Radio plays, you can read it. So thank God for that. And I did a, I've done some like movie stuff. Uh, film stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then... Uh, what would you, what would you say you're, you're 40? Is are you, are you comfortable with all of them? I am. Whether it I be am. straight roles or stand-up? Or... I am. It seems to be stand-up or a villain seems to be uh, <laughs> where I'm most comfortable at. But I really... How can I put it? Um, the stand-up's kind of taken over a bit now. Uh, but I want to get back into doing other things as well. But the stand up like takes a huge amount of my time and it seems to be really growing. So it seems to be this maybe is the best place to focus my efforts. That sounds really serious and dry, doesn't it? Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> we, need, we, just, need a, we need that. We need that. Fucking hell. Like, uh, <laughs> but it's just, it's just plain old fun. I mean, you, right. sometimes you can't go wrong with just, this is a really good laugh. Literally, you know, so. Why not do that? Was it um, we was it a case of you being more proactive to to search these things out, or was it a bit of both? Some things kind of landed in your way, or you you met some like minded people. Well, you know, there's like the Edinburgh Fringe, um, so it's like yeah. the, bit like biggest arts festival in the world, amazing. And I did right. a play with a really good friend of mine, and um, it was just me and her, and we. Like got the theater and it was in the, like the Royal Welsh Academy. Um, so it was a really cool theater and I did this play, it was in Edinburgh and I had no real thoughts of doing stand up comedy. And in spare time, you watch lots of shows and there's loads of comedy there. And I just, like a lot of people have, I thought mm, I can do that. I thought I'll have a go. And, um, I did, um, my first open mic thing in London and it was pure terror. I remember before I was supposed to go on. I um I ran to the toilet. The men's was further away, so embarrassingly, I ran into the women's toilet because I thought I was. It was like I'll vomit on the floor unless I just I've got to get. And I just I didn't. I wasn't sick, but I stared at myself in the mirror. You've got to do this, Dan. If you back out, you regret it. And I have no actual memory of doing it. I was so scared. <laughs> I, like I really. I I, I that, swear that I have no memory. Rush, yeah. yeah, I only know. I only recorded it. Like, I only recorded the audio. That's the only reason why I, I know it's not a dream. And then um. And I went back to Munich and I did a couple of shows here and I thought, this is great. But I thought, you know, I'd like to have a, a little bit more control over it. So I started my own show. 
Um, and it's gone from there. So, yeah, it's more like I like to kind of – controls maybe not. But I thought I'll give myself the opportunity, and the best way to do that is to create my own thing. So that's, yeah. I is that, kind is of that the advice question. you'd give to any, uh, anyone who's maybe thinking about jumping think, in at the deep end or dipping their toes into I'd, the water? I'd say at first, at very first, just do it. Don't think. Well, don't be like, oh, I think I'll wait a couple of months and plan out my material. Don't do that. Get up and do it. Um, tomorrow, if you really want to like do put it, just five minutes together, put five minutes it. together, or even three minutes, and then get on stage and just absolutely do it. Don't procrastinate. You'll just get, um, you'll find a reason not to do it and then jump on stage. And I absolutely guarantee, even if you don't do well, but you always get a lot of goodwill from the audience if it's your first time. And even if you don't do well or whatever, you will feel amazing afterwards. And regarding starting a show, I think that depends on the individual. Some people just really don't want to get involved in the organization. They just like to turn up, perform, go home. And there is a lot of organization to it. It's more than you think. So, um, and that's just not fun. There's no fun in that. No. So I think some people, depends on your personality. I, I like, I like to kind of have my own thing. So I, I don't mind doing it. Whereas, but also if I turn up to perform in other shows, it's bliss. Hey, I can just come here, relax, do my thing. Ah, whereas often with the show I'm doing now, it'd be fucking problems, panic. <laughs> and then I've got like, right, I've got to start in 10 seconds. And then it's just change my face, bang on stage and do it. Um, there's, there's a clip I saw online, uh, it might have been a couple of weeks ago when you posted it, but it was about the Augsburger Arschlecker, mm -hmm. right? So... <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of interesting because it seemed to be the people in the crowd. I guess now's as good a time to find out if any of the crowd were predominantly German that night. Absolutely, yeah. Generally, that's not the case, but this crowd was predominantly German. And I already knew what it meant, but it's kind of funny with... I find it funny. Um, to, to ask Germans to explain what bad words are. Words, <laughs> yeah, dirty, like Ashleck is like... Uh, uh, you, I think the English would use arsehole, but it means more like arse licker. Arse licker, right? Yeah. I would say. Um, and it's just funny to get someone to explain that to me. And the, <laughs> and the crowd, you could see on the clip, the crowd are really laughing. They really enjoy it. Yeah, it's it. funny. Man. Yeah, yeah it's so they're kind of like, oh, what's he saying? And um, so, yeah, it's enjoyable. But that's actually true, first German day, because I went to watch a football game, and it was 1860 against Augsburg, and we went up to Augsburg. And they're all shouting, Augsburger, Ashlecker. And I thought, what does that mean? And then they said, oh, right. <laughs> so then I knew. So, <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, kind of. So a lot of my, my football, some of my German's bad, but my football German and my bad word German are just about perfect. But the rest that's of it's... it all starts, I think. You know, that's when it starts and where it ends, you know, at least in my experience. I can swear yeah. a lot. Yeah, you get profanities, right? You're, yeah. You're, you're, you're but still, right if point. I'm really angry, though, if something's really pissed me off, like someone's nearly killed me when I'm cycling, then I switch into English. It's like default. Well, you can swear properly then, right? Like just, and I can really just... <laughs> With I don't gusto. Have to yeah, really. Like, and it only ever happens when... The only time I lose my rag is when someone's nearly killed me in their car and they're not apologetic. They look at me like I'm the... But it's like, fucking mate, you nearly killed me. So that's the only time I really break out into English swearing. I'm not proud of it, but <laughs> no, just, but, it, it, it but you nearly happen. killed me, mate. You know, I'm not yeah. upset just because, you know, you spilt my beer. I'm not bothered about that. But when people nearly kill me, yeah, I get upset. So one of the shows is West End. Is that right? Or are they both in the same event? No, you, there's no. three shows. No, uh, so two. Uh, so one's at West End, and it's just called that because the uh, district in, in Munich is called West End, Best End. And it's a bar there called Schwarze Dackel. And that's more like a regular pub, if you can imagine. And the other place is called Beverly Kills. And it's in the, the uh, an area called the Glockenbach Viertel. And that's more like, actually, it's like a hip-hop nightclub. Hip-hop nightclub. So I get the space from 8 till 10. And then when the show's over, it, it turns into what it really is, which is a nightclub. But the guys who own it, they're happy because it's an extra two hours of punters buying drinks. Yeah, and then obviously some of them stick around for the nightclub after. I'm happy because it's a uh, fr everyone's happy. It's a free place to perform, so that's uh, 
That's a good opportunity. You chapping on some doors to find some places to play. What was it like? Often, when you, give us a, an idea of the timeline when you you first moved to Munich, and or how long you've been doing doing this. The comedy. So I've been. I was in Munich for years before I started doing comedy. The comedy is relatively new, and it was just a case of I did a show. Um, it it was called Comedy Kills at the same venue, Beverly Kills, and that was on a Friday and a Saturday. But it's in German. But I said to the guy, oh, "Can I do it in English?" He's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, no problem." And I did it and we just got chatting. The guy organized it called Alex. And he said, look, you could use this as a venue. So I spoke to the owners. So they already had a successful Friday and Saturday before the nightclub. And I said, well, you're up on Thursdays. Do you want to do it on Thursdays? And they said, yeah. And um, I think we've done 60 shows there now, maybe more. But um, yeah, it's one of those things where everyone's happy. And the other one was, I wanted to start a second one. And that was... Yeah, you go around to various venues and ask, hey, are you interested in this? A lot of places say no. Honestly, I don't understand why. It's like, oh, I'll do all the work and here's some free money. <laughs> right, you, you know? know so um, what a nightmare, eh? I don't. But a lot of people just are not interested. So there is a bit of knocking on doors. and um, But the place with the Tuesday now, they were they said very they were very little cautious at the beginning, which is completely fair enough. We'll have a bit of a trial. The trial works because people want to come and watch stand-up comedy. They're happy. They're happy now, and, and I'm happy too. So, yeah, it's it's a real win-win. Um, I mean, the ultimate thing as well is is getting bums on seats, right? Yeah. Like how, how have you found that? Is it a very transient kind of it's, it's, uh, it's atmosphere, hard to, no, atmosphere audience? You know, is it generally it's expats who live here, and generally – you don't see the same faces twice. Um, and the it's so unpredictable how big the crowd is going to be. Sometimes the crowd isn't big. Sometimes it's rammed. And I couldn't tell you why. Because all the metrics you can look at, how many people on Facebook are interested, and the other things all say, well, oh, it's going to be busy. Whoa, we're in for a busy night tonight. And suddenly it isn't. Sometimes the last two shows we've done, all the people who work in gastronomy say, oh, January's the worst month. Biggest crowds we've ever had. Rammed. Um, so I had someone write to me today, even one of the people who went, said, oh, it was a really good show. I really enjoyed it, but it was too full. You know? I, and it's... Honestly, don't ask me. Same, same, same kind of promo thing every week, but varying amounts of people. So that's the other thing. How do they they be in the audience? How do they mm -hmm. know where you are? I mean, are you you would as we just talked about the social media yeah. kind of thing? But is there another platform that they can? Or do they just they just no. know it's there? I, I kind of ask them um, before, like chat, chat, chatting. And it's Google search. It's Facebook. It's Eventbrite. It's meet uh, meet up. So maybe they're looking for it specifically. Got, right? yeah, it, yeah. Often also people are just saying it's Thursday night. What's there to do? And they'll have a look around and they'll see there's a comedy night and they'll go to a comedy night. Some people are comedy fans and they think I'll go. Some people want to try it themselves. So they think they'll have a look. Um, how does it work? Some people, um, I can't friends of the comedians, you know, so they'll come along to support whoever, the, whoever's performing. It's a real mixed bag. Like, honestly, there's no, if I could, if I could figure out exactly to make sure it's full all the time, I'd do it, but I'm not sure there's any rhyme or reason to it. I wish I could figure it out. And generally, I think the venue helps as well. Um, you know, if it's, it's a good, good venue. You're in good, you're in good locations as yeah, well. Yeah, good locations. So both locations where I perform are known and easy to get to. They're not out of town or anything, so that helps. But apart from that, I couldn't tell you. I think, and then shows do get a good rep. Like, okay, you know, like anything, word of mouth. Oh, this is a good show. You good show? Go and check it out. So then, word of mouth helps too. But honestly, I don't know. <laughs> That's the long way of saying I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, Since we're, in the, we're recording this in the first week of. Uh... January 2023. 20, yeah. I can't what get used to 2023. Not yet, anyway, no. It's, probably next week it'll sink in. It'll, yeah, the, well, that next month. I haven't had a beer since Monday or Tuesday either. It's now Friday, so I don't I'm, know. I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying this dry January. 
I'll do and the dry one in February or March. I find it easier to do it then. I think so. I, I, it's I'm too not, soon, man. You know, it's too soon. After, I'm after kind of, because the shows are all in bars, so obviously you've got alcohol flying around everywhere. And uh, I'm all right with it. I'm not, I'm not kind of tempted, but yeah, sometimes it's not really like I need a beer. It's more, I just fancy a beer. Maybe that, maybe I'm fooling myself and I'm actually raging alky. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but it's just like, oh, that'd be nice to have a pint, you know. What, uh, I'm trying to avoid the word. Uh, I've completely forgotten the word this is. We're having all that good banter there. Uh, resolutions and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, New Year's rather, resolutions. Rather, yeah. rather than use resolutions, what about goals and aims and objectives and what plans have you got for the year ahead then, or at least in the next six months, you know, since we were um, talking about God, you, life going really. to Edinburgh in the summer? Yeah, that's the plan, like do a solo show in Edinburgh. So I went there last year. Uh, before COVID, I did the theatre play. And um, last year I went um, specifically to do comedy, but I did like spots here, spots there, and just got to know people. That was really fun. Really enjoyed it. So the aim this year is to bring my own solo show. So at the moment, just trying to build up to do 60 minutes. And then so I've, I do some shows in... Um, I did my first kind of big show, if you like, in, in December here in Munich. Me and a friend did it. So I did 30 minutes, he did 30 minutes, and we had some improvised comedy and roasting. And that was packed, sold out completely. Could have sold easy an extra 30 tickets on top. So thank God that was a success, you know, because I was really worried. Will it be a complete failure? I don't know. Um, it's a bit so, of added pressure, right? Yeah, really, yeah, yeah. Because it's not like, uh, it's this is my name now, you know, rather than hide is not the right word, but you can or he. I'm behind the name of a show. So that was tricky, but it was, but again, like I had no idea how it was going to go and it was a big success, luckily. So it's like, take that, develop that, perform in different cities, um, try and get a bigger name on social media, just kind of in general, just to start to do bigger and bigger and better shows. So like, so the, this year is the aim is by August to do my own solo show. That's the aim this year. And also keep the shows going, the two I've got. Make them bigger, make them better. Because uh, they're really fun Have things. you found a broom cupboard to stay in in Edinburgh or under the stairs? No, I, again, really lucky. Like, no, one of, my, like, one of my best friends lives in Edinburgh. Well, you've otherwise, I wouldn't be able, there, otherwise, I wouldn't be able to do it. Like, it'd be no chance because it's too expensive. It's ridiculous, actually, how expensive it is. It's priced normal people out of going. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a, you just, a, a, which is a only which is only negative for like the arts. There's so much talent, but it, but if you can't go, you can't go because it's too expensive. You might be the best comedian in the world, but if you haven't got the money, you can't go. This is a real shame. I'm a, I can only go because I've got a, a free place to stay. Otherwise, it'd be impossible. So yeah, personally, uh -huh. like I'm also start to do more videos, and I want to do more character comedy. Um, so that's my aim. The big one's August, August Edinburgh. Cause for me, that feels like a bit of a big thing, you know, really, if I can do my own solo show there, I'd be really happy, really happy. What advice would you give to uh, someone who's wanting to try out then, you know, like if you were someone come up to you and ask him to do the five or 10 minutes, Yeah, but they I'd didn't say, know where to start. You know, I'd you say know. if, if. I would say, number one, do it as soon as possible. Number two, if you're not sure what to do, I'd say absolutely keep it your own material. Number one, keep don't copy anybody. It's got to be original from you. And I just have a think about your life. Sit down and write a list. Um, what I love, what I hate, things that interest me, things I'm passionate about. Try and find the funny in it. You could do those, well, I don't know what you call it, like spider diagrams, mind charts. You know, you have a word in the middle and then there's lots of... Mind map things. Mind maps, that's it. Yeah, that's thanks. And uh, mind maps and then try and figure things out and then give it a go. Like I said, for the first time you get a lot of goodwill, first few times. So you can experiment and then figure out, all right, that worked. We'll keep that. That didn't work. Why? Can I change it? change the vocabulary, change the style, 
try it again. Maybe it doesn't work again. There comes a point where you have to say this idea is just shit. <laughs> Bin it. Um, and this idea is good. And I, what I like about comedy is you know it's good because people laugh. It's about as simple as that. They laugh or they don't. Um, so obviously if they laugh, it works, then you can keep that little bit and then start to build. So two minutes becomes five minutes, five minutes can become 10 minutes, but the only way, you know, is performing in front of a live audience. That's the only way to know. And then by people laughing and not, you just, you know, trim off what doesn't work, build what does, and eventually you start to build a bigger set and don't be scared to try new material. And if it bombs, it bombs. Um, so don't worry about it. The first or the last one, right? That's I, I don't, quite I, much you could guarantee. No, yeah, because you want to try new material and then grow. Because um, what you think might be funny and what might work oh have God, complete I, opposite effect. Oh, I remember one side this story about it. It's nonsense. Like my mum came to visit and she brought this stupid present with her, and I thought it's the funniest thing in the world. And I was telling people just the story what happened in in pubs, friends, and they were laughing their asses off. Yeah, and I tried to do it on stage, bombed, died awful and i'm still mystified but i learned a lesson <laughs> but i learned a lesson it doesn't work so like there's no point in banging my head against the wall with it just bend it but again that was how i learned just by doing it afterwards i felt oh, was something horrible inside my soul is dead nobody's laughing oh <laughs> oh god yeah yeah it's kind of a horrible feeling but still the afterwards the adrenaline of doing it it feels great I so think my advice, you want to be, oh no, please go. On. But I'd say my advice is number one, just do it. Don't think, just do, and analyze. Not have a listen to what you did, figure out what works and what doesn't, and then build from that and grow. Do you record most of your shows everything, and then everything. go back and have listen back I again? Rec I record everything. Sometimes I don't because, well, oh, it's just laziness, really. If I'm honest. Sometimes I don't know, I need to, I record, but I, I make a point of recording everything. Um, just so you might remember, oh, I did that spontaneously based on what someone in the crowd said, but that could really work. And then listen back, what was it? Um, and then figure things out. Or also you can just listen back to what you did and oh, that word there worked a lot better than using that word. And it is weird. The, the, the little things that can suddenly make something laugh someone laugh like I had a joke where I tried lots of airline names and the only one that worked was Ryanair you know EasyJet didn't work um Lufthansa didn't work British Airways didn't work Lufthansa did uh sorry Ryanair did and then yeah little things like that I have no idea then suddenly everyone's like mm, what, what this guy what's this guy on about so, oh yeah, la really funny it's like, it's a bit like alchemy, I think, rather than an exact science. <laughs> that's, that's an interesting way to put yeah. it. It's the, the, the continual search for alchemy there, right? Yeah, there, really, you know. really like digging for gold. And it, it pops up in the most weird places. Um, and also I think having an open mindset where you kind of start writing and then looking for the funny and suddenly it starts to become automatic, natural. And then funny things start to come along and then you go to a, an opportunity to perform open mic, whatever that might be, perform, trial it and build from there. And it's like anything, the more you do it, the better you get. So my advice would be, be once you decide to do it, do it as quickly as possible. Next available opportunity, um, try and work some things out, but keep it personal, your own voice. Cause people will know if you rip off a joke or something like that, then they know immediately and they think you're a bit of a dick. Did you see the James Corden, Ricky Gervais? I did. Yeah. Thing? Yeah. I did. It was interesting, but Ricky Gervais came out and said, it's absolutely no problem. You know, it was an accident. Well, he's just sitting in his house, count his money. Right? I know. Like, God, yeah. he's rich. <laughs> Lucky. But he's, he turns out good stuff. Like Ricky, I mean like the office and then extras and then that Derek one and afterlife. I didn't, I didn't like the Derek one. I don't know. I just wasn't funny. I don't, I really, I, I don't know. I can't, well, not funny, but I thought it was kind of comedy. Well, it was interesting. It was, interesting. A, it was, it was a good, interesting is more, more yeah. funny. Extras was just funny. Um, yeah. but yeah. I think the, the office is class, man. The office mm. is just cringe worthy. And surprisingly, I like the American one too. I was a bit negative about the American one, the remake. I often like, oh, they'll, they'll ruin it, whatever, but it is really good. 
But yeah, regarding, I don't know, that Ricky Gervais thing was, it seems I'd, I've never, no idea. I've never met the two. I've got no idea what they're like personally. Well, Frankie, it, Balls, Frankie Balls forever winding him up, right? If yeah. you watch the New World Order thing, he's always talking about the difference between being a stand-up and doing a, yeah. a live show kind of thing. Is, is but I read like so Stuart Lee, you know Stuart Lee? Mm. comedian and he was like ripping into frankie boyle i think saying like yeah we, he, he does well but considering how many writers joke writers he's got for him no wonder and i think having a little dig at that like i don't know what frank i, I think frankie Boyle's really funny i remember his show tramadol nights i don't know if you saw that tramadol nights yeah, that, that was, was really good <laughs> but it was a bit hardcore but i thought it was really funny so i like that mm. frankie Boyle's great I, i'm not too fussed how they come up with the material as long as it's funny but um, yeah, that it. whole I, I've heard loads of bad things about Corden. I've never met him, obviously. But um, what I read about seems he's not a good guy. He does have I a gather. Bit of a reputation as a yeah, as a, as a, a bit of a bully <laughs> and a bit of an asshole, and you know, like really arrogant and. And I'm sure getting to Hollywood and having people kiss your ass, God, God yeah, fuck whatever imagine, you want is. I know gonna, if you're already that way inclined, and then suddenly. You've got everyone just saying you're the fucking brilliant. Oh, you're brilliant. Oh, you're so amazing. I mean, I've, I've never warmed to the guy personally. I was finding him a bit fake. Yeah. I don't know. You know who Lenny is? I know we keep talking about Scottish comics and that's what it sounds like, but you know who Lenny is? No, I don't. I've never heard of Lenny, right. no. So if you go and look up Lenny, he's done all sorts of kind of sketch shows in the past and now he's a Twitch guy. Okay. So he puts all his stuff, he streams it and all that stuff. But he, I saw a thing a, a while ago, it was really funny on YouTube, where he just goes into the, how much the mannerisms of James Corden really annoys him. So it's like <laughs> that reaction video of, and he's just like, he's just going off his head. But it's, it's okay, cool. I'll have to check him out then. Lemmy, no, I've never heard of Lemmy. No, there's... Yeah, it's, it's, Kind of well known, and he did some stuff with Charlie Brooker way way back in the when he did those okay. TV things. I forget what they were called, but Charlie Brooker's TV Watch or whatever it was. Oh called. no, I heard, I never saw that. I only really Charlie Brooker's uh, from Black you Mirror. Get all which, them on YouTube. Eh? Yeah, no, I'll have to check that out. I like the idea. Sounds really fun. And to be honest with you, if he if he's getting annoyed by James Corden's mannerisms, he sounds like my kind of guy. It's like there's one that James. He does that horrible. It sounds like I know everything about James Gordon, but it's just because I've seen all these dodgy videos. He's in the carpool karaoke, and it's just the mm. worst thing ever, mm. man. Eh? And he's, he just keeps freeze framing it. He's like, oh, fuck it, look, fuck it. And he's just he's losing his shit, but it's hilarious. That fucking grinded. That I saw a bit of it, and then I think, oh, yeah. I just It's one of those ones where you see it for a little bit, and you just, you oh, this is not for me. You know? <laughs> What I find the guy grinds about? a little bit. It's all, if I just see his, I think he seems to be a bit love hate. Just the guy just, I see his face and I think you're a bit of a dick. <laughs> you know, I just, I, 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 you know, you warm to people. Right. And some people you just well, he see. Has no, he has no warm for I know. I just find him just <laughs> like a charisma water. vacuum. Yeah. Just like, you're not for me, mate. Yeah, no, I don't like him. <laughs> I think we've established that. I think both of us think he's a fucking asshole. There we go. It's, mm. it's approved stamp. Yeah. The explanation part. Uh, I tend to do musical guilty pleasures, but it doesn't okay. have to be anything musical. No, I've, well, I've got lots of musical guilty pleasures. I've got lots yeah, of guilty go. pleasures. All right, so we'll, we'll go back then. So uh, guilty pleasure. Okay, music-wise, it'd be um, Rick Astley. Oh, that's harsh, man. Because everyone always like, I, I I'm known amongst friend circle for having what they say is a terrible taste in music, but I don't think it is. <laughs> I like a lot of eighties pop music and stuff like that. So personally, when I was I like, blame, uh, personally, I don't blame Rick Astley. I guess he's no. just the messenger per se. Yeah, the stock cake and water, water but they should be yeah. taken in the back and duly sorted yeah. out. Yeah, you know, but I thought it's just really good pop songs, and the guy comes across really well, and um. And I've always got, I get a soft spot for people from my area. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not even sure he is a guilty pleasure. I think he's brilliant. But um, I don't know, read Rick... the whole thing, like, with the Foo Fighters and all that, right? Yeah. And just the Dude, I think he's really good. Rick Rolling or whatever it was Rick called. Rick Rolling, right? there was, yeah. There was this whole... I remember that came out, and I, I saw mm. a poster for him. It should be um, Rick Astley for Prime Minister, because he's never going to give you up. He's never going to let you down. <laughs> I, I, was just, I found it funny, and I think it's really good. So... 
Yeah, if anyone doesn't like him, fuck him. I, I think he's funny. <laughs> well, the good news is this is this is all about you, man. So my, I keep my guilty pleasures for for my hundredth episode or whatever it is, you know. But uh, Rick Astley's fair enough. You got another one for us? Uh, God, it's hard to think. Like, what would it be? Food wise, it'd be like proper chippy and curry sauce. And it just all looks like someone's shit on the diarrhea <laughs> on the chips. But bloody hell, it tastes good. And you just can't get it. Some of that in the way oh, home, right? oh, God. Yeah. That's what they, they don't get it. You have everything in me. I don't know what it's like where you live. But here, you just can't get proper dirt food at the end of the night. Whereas in my, I'm, I think everywhere in the UK, really, you have a few pints and you can get proper chippy or a kebab. Here, the kebabs are actually seem like health food, whereas you just get <laughs> a, a kilogram of dirt in it. Oh, God, it tastes good. Um, when Scotland, they're calling them, mun- I don't know how long it's been around, but the munchy boxes. So you just get basically like the huge pizza size box. All right. Variations of that size yeah. with as many fried, like deep fried pakora. Oh, I've seen those. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, yes. Yeah. It's, but it's heaven. I think this is actually for the hangover. I haven't had. Oh, the, God, it's good. I haven't Are you had eating? The, the guts to do it myself. <laughs> yeah. Drunk at night, it tastes amazing. Then what you can't finish, stick it in the microwave the next day. Heaven. But horrible. You'll de- you'll be dead in no time eating that. You're not going to last. But every now and again, and what well, it were things like food wise. I guess it's that then, because I remember I show people pictures of it here, like German friends of mine, and they just say that's disgusting. How can you eat that? And I was like, oh mate, it's just <laughs> you don't know what you're missing. You don't know what you're missing. Heaven and proper pies as well. Oh mm. pies, man. There we go. Oh god, yeah. So food wise, it'd be. What else? I don't know. Maybe I'm a bit vanilla when it comes to food. I don't know. Because I do like to cook. I like to cook a lot. Uh, but yeah, chips. Chips and gravy or chips and curry sauce. And it's not proper curry. It's this... Nothing tastes like it, really. There's a specific thing. If anyone's... Uh, chip shop curry. Google it's a specific it. thing. <laughs> Google it. It's, it's a it's specific, specific thing. It's not proper curry sauce. Definitely. Uh, tell us someone you don't get in, Daniel. Tell us someone that's maybe, in your humble opinion, overrated, or you just think, uh, we just talked about James Corden for about the last 10 James minutes. James Corden? Someone other than that Muppet, you know. In, in like general, music, comedy, film? Oh, in general, general, really. In general. Like, it could be music, it could be uh, it's really, whatever wait. you like. Uh, overrated. Italian food. Any old bastard can do that. It's just fucking tomato sauce <laughs> and pizza. I'm always like, what? <laughs> anyone can do this. Um, in film, I don't know. Oh, why like, they all skinny? You don't really see that many fat oh, I know. Right oh, now. God, you go to Italy and you just go out regularly. It's ridiculous. How are they always so stylish? I know. It's, it's, it's in the stubborn. DNA. It's ridiculous. Why does everyone... Where they got the money from? Look good. I know. <laughs> it's supposed to, and that, But they're not wearing fashion labels. How do they all look amazing? I don't know, but I still reckon the food's overrated. Um, acting is a weird one. Like Keanu Reeves is a big star. I don't think he's a good actor, but he's a great kind of performer. And he seems like the nicest guy in the world off stage. If you read the stories about him. Apparently so. Apparently he's a top man. Yeah. Oh, absolute diamond. Um, and he was in oh, Bill and Ted, so I, I give him that. Bill and Ted. Oh, I still really find it funny with this say Socrates, not Socrates. <laughs> I still can't. I still can't see Socrates without saying Socrates. Um, we also like music-wise. Mm, let's have a think. Uh, <sighs> I love like I still like P moment. Diddy and stuff like that. I always think like oh, the big hits that you've got are basically just ripping off. Really good. Believe, like the other kids are calling it sampling. Oh, sampling yeah <laughs> it's just like bollocks that's just what it is. It, you know? yeah he's stealing it. like the kind of that p diddy song he had that big one like that which is basically just not even a some kind of a remix it was just the police every breath you take you know i'll be oh, watching yeah, you. Right. that was when like well someone get shot it's one of his buddies got shot or something um. but it's like well at least do an original song but you just rip off something else and I just thought, well, this is not... That's a great hook, by the way. You look dumb. Yeah. It just, like, ripped <laughs> it. But it was almost everything about it was the same. You know, I, well, the, certainly the music behind it. I'm no music expert, so I, I couldn't tell you. Well, I'm sure Sting and his buddies but made a few quid off He probably made it. I know, but if someone says to him, like, oh, we'll give you this fat envelope of cash, he'd be like, yeah, all right, I'll do that. 
<laughs> Who else would it be overrated? That everyone How about I give, you, I give you a couple and see what you think, right? Ed Sheeran. God, yeah. He's someone I just, God, yeah. I should have thought of that. He sells out stadiums. He's the biggest selling recording artist, artist in the world. And it's if a I mystery I turned up me. in a stadium and I saw a guy with an acoustic guitar and that, that was it and I paid 150 bucks for a ticket. Number fucking... one, I'd be stupid, but number two, I'd be really pissed off. Pissed off. That was, it. That was all I'm getting is some Muppet with an And he seems guitar. to be just, <laughs> like, just vanilla. He's like elevating music. It's is just in the background. Beige? I don't know. But I, for me, vanilla and beige are the same thing. <laughs> but you know what <laughs> I mean? Like, if, if it's in the background, I'm not going to jump up and say, turn that fucking shit off. I just won't notice. Do you know what I mean? And then it's a mystery it's just to bland me. after bland. Just bland. It's just like, yeah, it's like elevating music. I couldn't, or music you hear in supermarkets. I'm not going to start raging about how terrible it is, but I'm also just not going to notice it. It's just some din in the background. So yeah, Ed Sheeran. And uh, they did a show in Munich. Uh, the, there's the Olympic Stadium in Munich. Absolute packed. Uh, up here at Schalke, just... right? It's not far away. Gelsenkirchen is not far from Dortmund. It's what, 20, 30 kilometers or something? It's not far. And uh, yeah, the Veltins Arena, he played there like two nights. They had to move it from Dusseldorf, apparently. I know a couple of people that went and uh, yeah, I just, I just thought- You're still friends with them? There. I just stopped the conversation there. Yeah, <laughs> just like, you do you. It's, it's your money, you know, you can but uh, I, I, score it as you see fit. I know, because there's so much, many good up, but there's not not enough, but places in Munich, you can pay 10 euros and see all sorts of new bands, and there's, you might not like it, but there's energy there, you know, and there's like, okay, they're putting something in. People might have something to say, or I know. Uh, heaven forbid a hook, you know, or a, Oh, God, that song you did that about an Irish girl, what was it? Maybe that's what it was called. I don't know. Like, oh, I just thought. My favorite you know, one was, uh, I, I can't remember what it was called either. The one about, it's the one, the video where he's a boxer. It's like, a, it's like the oh, most God. rocky montage you've ever seen. It's fantastic. I mean, it's just whoever, they're like, yeah, get, get this kid to do it. Pretend he's rocky. You know? oh, <laughs> You're like, who comes up with that idea? But yeah. I think that says something, doesn't it? That he's world famous. Everyone knows who he is, but neither me or you could name one of his songs. I couldn't. I couldn't tell you. I couldn't the name an album. The is one. Maybe that's is the it? Rocky. Okay, but I know that as a movie. Might be wrong. There's a really good film. Oh no, that's the. Sh is that the Shape of Us or the Shape of You? Shape of Us, because that's a really great film. But I couldn't tell you anything. Ab I couldn't tell you anything about him. Um, I'm sure he's a nice bloke. Okay. I've got no idea who he's personally, but uh, well, the, the, his team of songwriters have been done. I don't know how many times for. I know he seems copyright to get into trouble a lot for copyright and stuff. But also, then if you maybe they, it's it's kind of very corporate. They'll say, "Look, we'll make a hundred million from this, but if we get sued, we pay twenty out, so we're eighty in profit." So yeah, fuck it. The new guitar and a pair of yeah. a pair of coin, so fuck coin vests or something. Yeah, yeah. He's on his way. Yeah. So the, I wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me if at that corporate level of music, they just someone sat there doing a calculation. This is this is what it cost us. To, to settle out of court and this is what it'll cost this is how much money we'll make so they wouldn't surprise me uh, last one in this theme then a slightly more controversial one uh, queen the band aye I as in, not as in not the but the, I, the, the, I, I, do you know what i've <laughs> we'll save that I, podcast for another day you know? i i used to think they were amazing like genuinely amazing like the uh, I, Queen, you know, the albums, I used to listen to them all the time. I had so many good songs. I really liked them. But then I, I found out more about them. Like they, they went to perform in apartheid South uh, apartheid Africa. Apartheid South Africa, right? And then yeah. I just, I thought, oh, no. Really need the cash? I lads. know, because they, they, <laughs> they were already phenomenally successful. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, why would you do that? And that kind of put me off. You know, when you learn something about your... Hero, not heroes, but you learn something about someone you really like and it puts you off. So I, I only found out about that recently. I didn't know until recently. And that kind of God made me think. The same. There was a bunch of them did the same. I don't yeah, get why you do that. Because it's not like you need the money. I don't know. Maybe if you're absolutely desperate and you've got kids to feed and you're going to be made homeless, maybe you have to make a, put your morals to one side to do something that's just horrible. I don't know. Everyone's got their own. But if I'm already a big star and a multimillionaire, tens of millions, I'm not going to do that. 
No, you're just being a dick. Yeah, you're obviously. being an absolute dick. Because then, it, it, the, you know, some things there's grey areas, but th- that was a, just a clear right and wrong. There's no grey area about it. You know, and I don't understand why they did Well, obviously for the money, but how much money do you need and how do you make that moral choice? I, I couldn't do it and I wouldn't do it. So that put me off. So the music, yeah. The band, no. If, if, Hell is... That's a bit of a soft answer, isn't it? <laughs> no, but no, I do that's... really like the music. I do. I think they're great. I really do. I don't know. I, your opinion on it, but I think they just done some amazing songs. Um, but that really put me off the performing in South Africa thing. That really put me off. So now I don't listen to them anymore, actually. Sadly, like something per, I used to really like Michael Jackson, for example, the thriller album, I thought was one of the best albums ever. It's quality, man. But, but when you learn about him, some questionable life life choices, you know, that, you know, that finding Neverland. Yeah. I don't know if you saw that documentary after watching that, I can't listen to him anymore. I just can't. I just, as soon as I hear it, I just, it's done for me. That's it, man. It's a shame because I, I, it's a shame, but yeah, but it's just ruined for me. So I don't listen to it anymore. That, so that's that for me anyway. Go to karaoke song then, Daniel. Pretty Woman by Roy Orbison. Oh, quality. <laughs> it's just, it's probably because you get a little bit of air guitar when you're doing it as well. Like, no, you know, no, no. I try and do a bit of a performance. So like, uh, oh, uh, Sort of like walking down the street, don't walk away. Hey, and I'll do, a, it's, it's a I'll do kind a story, of like, I'll, right? I'll walk away. Yeah, I, I really like songs that have like a little story in it. Obviously, it's not some complex thing, but there's a little story to it. And I love it. I think I like a lot of like Roy Orbison. He's a bit underrated. Uh, and, great um, singer, I would say. Great, and, um, an iconic voice, maybe. Yeah, some yeah. You know, you, I'm right in saying he wrote his own material, right, as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Pretty Woman, absolutely, every single time. Pretty Woman, Roy Orbison. And then maybe maybe Pulp, Common People. Oh, uh, good choice. Who else? I don't know. Then I might have a look on the list and just do some random. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, oh God, Roy Orbison every time. That's my absolute go-to. Bang, I'm doing this. To the point where it's probably, if, some, if I'm going out with mates, it's probably boring. Yours? <laughs> Not again. What's yours? <laughs> Oh, karaoke song one. It depends on, I guess it depends on the mood. If you're feeling like that two minutes and change or something, then you do like a Jimi Hendrix Purple Haze or something because yeah. there's no singing in there. Oh, I'll tell you what pisses <laughs> me off though, that something that really does my head in, and that's when people do like, say, that Celine Dion from t- song from Titanic. Ooh. It's fucking depressing. It's Friday <laughs> night, Saturday night, everyone's supposed to have fun, and you're doing this misery. <laughs> Fuck off, man. Come on. Just, <laughs> cheer like, up, honestly, cheer up. Just, don't, you're making everyone miserable here, playing your suicide music. Please put something on that people find at least entertaining. I can't stand well, that, honestly. The, like The big controversy the last day or two, at least in the kind of uh, the music world, has been that Celine Dion's been left off the best. It's Rolling Stones, so it doesn't really have okay. any music anymore. But uh, I guess in the past, the, the Rolling Stones top 100 best vocalists or something, Celine okay. Dion's left off it. She's not even on it. So she must really have done something to piss someone off. Because I don't know. Of, I mean, she, I find that... No, I find her voice grates a little bit. I think she clearly, I suppose technically you can say she's an amazing singer. Technically, but she doesn't, I'd rather have someone who isn't so good, but actually I like, and I feel something, there's some charisma there, rather than just this polished ballad. Mm. Uh, not for me. We can't agree that uh, My Heart Will Go On should be Fucking not, banned. Maybe not banned, but, not but banned, you know, maybe but... discouraged. Oh, God. <laughs> and it's like that Adele song. There's, Adele's another one I'm not a fan of, if I'm honest. Just this kind of, those kind of like, I don't know, poncy ballads. I can't stand them, honestly. They're just like this saccharine fake. Oh, oh. no. This mass produced crap. It's just. Nah. Oh, God, yeah. It's not for me. Absolutely. Just, oh, God. No. Moving swiftly on, favorite yeah. venue, either you've played or where you you like to go see someone. Uh, I'm sure you've you've shared a few stages in your time. I have a few, but I'm sort of think about that. Where I performed, I performed in this theatre in Antwerp, a play, and it was massive. 
you know when they've got like the gods and they've got like rings of uh like seating higher up in boxes and a huge theater i performed there and i just like walked on the stage like did a bit of rehearsal before and um i was like blown away do you know what? i'm i can't remember the fucking name um that'd be uh that'd be comedy wise it would be um there's a theater in a big theater in munich called drehleyer and it's like two three hundred and it but it's more set up like there's beer table seats so it's not really like a theater so people are eating and drinking while it's on and that's amazing really big fit two or three hundred people um been to watch I prefer like smaller venues. There's a, a venue in Munich called Strom, and I think it maybe fit 200 people in, and that'd be packed. But it's really just really oh, wow. Um, where else is that a so, comedy specific venue? No, it, no, it's it music, it's music, 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 music venue. Because a lot of the generally the comedy venues are just kind of like back rooms in bars and things like that. Whereas that Drehleyer is specifically for cabarets, you know, like, like comedy mm. and you know like burlesque and dancing and singing and and more like fun things uh that one in answer is a straight theater like almost like an opera house it was massive um and to watch stuff in munich i think munich's a bit poor for good venues you know for a city like this it's a bit like tat like i've since i couldn't the first one that comes to my head is strong um and then i struggle there's some bad venues here. I can tell you bad venues, <laughs> whereas good venues, I'd say Strom. Um, yeah, it's got a really nice energy when it's full. Well, I have, a, I have a, an, ep, an idea for an episode of this podcast, where I'm just going to talk about venues with, uh, uh. try and get like a venue story episode. You know, yeah. from um, so I might be back in touch with you. Yeah, <laughs> please do. And <laughs> I can have a think about it. Because everyone has a story to tell about if you've ever played somewhere, yeah. whether it be big, small, great, there, there might be some kind of a uh, memory there. There's what, yeah, oh God, there's one like performing in, once I did a show in front of four people. That was a bit hard. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're you kind of like, oh, you know, it gets to a point if there's less than four, I'd like privately just say, should we bother? I'll buy you a beer. <laughs> Whereas, um, no, I never like quit. I was, I don't care how many people are there. Um, and some venues I've found horrible to perform in the worst venues doing comedy or when they don't open it just for comedy. So you've got people in the back who are just there because like in an Irish pub, for example, they're just there chatting. So you can't tell them to shut up because they're not doing anything wrong, but it just this, mm, that's not so great. They're the, wor the worst ones. To the atmosphere. No, it takes it, away it, from it. Ah, exactly. It's and then that, those are the kind of the worst kind of venues, I think. And the best ones are where you've got a kind of, I find doing comedy more an intimate space where you can make eye contact with people and there's like a connection. Um, but music wise, yeah, connection through the music rather than them looking at me. But there's this venue, Strom, it's really, I like, like, good, good stage, maybe space for 100 people max 200 people and um yeah big venues and stadiums leave me a bit cold you know like a little dot in the distance or yeah i'm not interested in that it's a bit of a you never know man when you're you're headlining there you might uh... <laughs> oh if i did oh god dang, fuck, don't get me wrong if someone if i oh, if, it's always been my dream <laughs> if if i ever got the chance to perform in a big venue and then got millions yeah fuck that give me the money <laughs> you know i've got to be a last pragmatic well the bertold brecht you know the german playwright he had yeah, a good yeah. um he said the first first bread then morals <laughs> kind of there i think go. there's something fair about that that's it's and he was a apt. socialist and i was like yeah, yeah. you got to make pragmatic decisions every now and again right, definitely last question for you man yeah the who should we be listening to whether that be doesn't necessarily have to be uh, music related but you know mm -hmm. it could be comedy related or someone or something you'd like to bring your attention to uh the comedian Stuart Lee. um i think he's just phenomenal he doesn't really do podcasts or anything. You could watch a lot of his shows on YouTube and things he like does, that. He like, big rambling kind of monologue. Oh, God, yeah. That's so it's good. But it's all... I saw him... I went to Edinburgh specifically in June. He does two shows. So it's like an hour... It's basically two and a half hours of just him. You know, and he writes all his own material. Um, and he's just phenomenal. Uh, I, it's just one of those where my cheeks are hurting afterwards. 
Um, and I saw his other, like a new show he did in August in Edinburgh as well. That's when I was doing little comedy bits, performing myself. And again, he's just so good. My, I walk out with my cheeks in pain and he's just phenomenal. So if there's anyone you want to check out comedy wise, I'd say Stuart Lee. There's another one who died recently, sadly, Sean Locke. Oh yeah. Uh, and he was really good. And there was a, a sitcom he made that hardly anyone saw and it's called 15 stories high and you can watch that on youtube as i think on youtube as well and that's brilliant that is just criminally underrated um how nobody ever saw that i don't know and he's just brilliant sean lock bloody tragic that he died um anyone else oh, i can't i'm trying to think there's a music wise there's a a DJ from Seattle who remixes 80s songs and Japanese pop music called Young Bay. Like, I believe the genre is Vaporwave and I can't get enough of it. I think there's something I cannot, I cannot get a, 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 And also there's a Canadian band I really like called um, Chromio. I think they're phenomenal. They're a bit like more like a bit like 80s-ish, but they're modern, it's now, and they're phenomenal. So if there's anything, your listeners, I'd say comedy-wise Stuart Lee, and uh, Sean Locke, and also he's been dead for 30 years, but he died really young. I think he died when he was 32. Bill Hicks, oh, yeah. amazing, absolutely amazing. He was like a rock and roll comedian. No, no cure for cancer and all that. Many no, no, no cure for cancer was uh, oh, Dennis, Dennis Leary. Leary. Excuse me. I but there was a big way. hoo-ha then. Strike me down. But there was a big <laughs> hoo-ha about, there's about Dennis Leary basically completely stolen Bill Hicks's Bill act, Hicks's, completely yeah, right. robbed him. I remember and that. The there was a big, I'm just, all I'd say is draw your own conclusions. Watch yeah, both I, of them and I, just I, see what you your back out there. Oh, right? Bill but, Hicks uh, is phenomenal. The Bill Hicks stuff, he's going in the Waffle House and all that stuff. And oh, he's, it's, like, he's what, one of the ones what where you're reading like, for? what you're reading <laughs> for. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. What you, oh, God, it's Waffle phenomenal. <laughs> and he, he was someone who I'd say actually was a big influence on me. Someone I wanted to do comedy. He's someone like, I'd say if someone said like, my comedians were like, also made me want to do it and it'd be bill hicks and stuart lee i just think are just fun geniuses just it's it transcends comedy to i think stuart lee could become incredibly abstract and do these wonderful things uh and bill hicks he had really something to say mm. you know real points but did them in a really funny way and music wise maybe not as sophisticated but chromio and this young bay it's like yeah, I think they're brilliant. But, and that's, but these are things I've just got into. We could put links in the boxes. Oh, has God. to do this these days, Daniel. Oh, links, links, links. Point at the links, point the, the links you point that way or that <laughs> way. Up to you? Yeah, it's up here. Like, oh, but honestly, I think they're phenomenal. Like these two guys, this, uh, well, these, the band, there's two people, the Canada, um, and this, this is this DJ guy, but I got into it and it's like, I can't get enough of it now. And then Fair from enough, that, man. if you look on Spotify, then you know they give recommended things, and then you listen mm. to lots of other things. This Macross eighty two ninety nine, and you know you start to learn about other stuff. A lot of it's just Japanese influenced pop music from the eighties, but they've remixed it. I fucking love it. I can't get enough of it. <laughs> <laughs> and on that bombshell, where can we, where can we find you online, Dad? Just before we me, up, yeah, right? oh God. Um, Oh, this is plug, the bit. Plug that this is the shit, bit. I'm man. not good. Plug that shit. So I do. Um, so basically, Daniel Beaver comedy on Instagram. Um, that's probably the main one, personal one. From there, you can find out whatever shit I'm doing. Or I'm also on like TikTok and TikTok. Fuck, saying I'm on TikTok. <laughs> and um, now is, you, you kind of you said that with kind of bravado. I don't know, like of, oh god. And so then you can like, feel um, the guilt hit you more. You like, can. Oh, I've started using that regularly now, so you can watch more nonsense. Uh, that's also like Daniel Beaver comedy. Um, all the links are there. I've got a new podcast now called Beavercast, which is me and a few of the comedians chat shit. But it is. It's, it is. I, I'm not just saying it is really funny. But it is makes me laugh uh, thinking about it. But uh, yeah, I liked your artwork, by the way, for it. I did that actually. Yeah, yeah I did it myself. Good. I did it my. I um, like that one. I'm trying. Yeah, that's another. Yeah, I I kind of enjoy doing that actually. But yeah, um, so I'm yeah. So God, I'm not good at this self promotion. Uh, Daniel Beaver <laughs> comedy on Instagram, um, Facebook. Daniel Beaver comedy. Uh, 
what else do I use regularly? Um, Beavercast is the podcast. And yeah, and now I've started using a YouTube suit. So Daniel Beaver, uh, Daniel the Beaver on uh, YouTube. Daniel, man, it's been an absolute blast. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, for thanks for man. inviting me on. I, I, I loved it. Yeah, it's proper fun. Thank you. Thank All you right. very much. I really enjoyed that. Cheers, man. And uh, good luck with everything moving forward, man. Aye, hopefully. Same, same. Yeah, same for you. Yeah, we'll see what the future holds.